Hello everyone, I hope your day is going well and welcome to this episode of Cranbusher's Guide. Last episode we explored basic equipment needed for stop motion and some helpful tools of the program Dragon Frame. And today we'll be going over some basic things about lighting and DSLR camera settings, and how they can affect your animation. Yay! So just for example, I have a few objects placed on my work table at certain distances from the camera. They are pretty evenly lit from just one softbox light, and these lights are the closest thing to white light that isn't from the sun. Anyway, first off to start, no matter what kind of camera you're using, even if it's not DSLR, make sure you set it to as manual as possible, including focus if you can. You want as much control over all of its visual settings as you can. Now I can't really tell you specifically how to change those settings because, well, I have no idea what camera you're using, but it's probably hopefully similar to what I'm going to go over, so it should be fine. As for the lucky few who do have a DSLR camera, do pretty much the same thing. Set it to manual, including the focus, and we're gonna go over all them scary or sultry settings. You can see and manipulate all the settings for the camera, but if you have a camera hooked up to our good old pal Dragon Frame, if you remember, look, there they are! Whoa, it's like the future or something! So there are four main settings that are important to making changes to how your frames turn out. There are more, but I've never touched them, and they frankly scare me. So first off, you got your shutter speed, then f-stop, and ISO. And then down here is your nifty white balance, but we'll save that for later. Shutter speed is the length of time a camera sensor is exposed to light, which means, little known fact, a photograph isn't capturing a moment in time, it's capturing a fraction of time, which can be as quick as a fraction of a second, or as long as several seconds, or maybe even minutes if you're feeling adventurous, but who knows, your camera might explode. Not really, but, but maybe. The longer the shutter speed is, generally the brighter your image gets. However, if there are moving objects being captured, they tend to get blurred as their whole action in the fraction of time is captured. But unless you're using some kind of voodoo magic, these guys don't really move on their own, so that's not really a problem. You can even use that effect to your advantage to make super cool stuff. For example, that, that explosion is just me waving a flashlight around through the hole. It's pretty... It's, it's it's pretty cool! F-stop is what controls the camera's depth of field, which is how much of the objects in frame are in focus depending on their distance from the camera. If the f-stop is very shallow, only a short distance is going to be in focus. If it's a lot deeper, pretty much everything in frame is in focus. A lot of the time with stop motion's relatively small scale, a less shallow depth of field helps to create the illusion that the teeny objects are actually normal size, whereas a shallow depth of field has the opposite effect. Think about tilt shift images. The depth of field is so small that giant objects in cities look so tiny! I love tilt shift stuff. It's it's so cool. Look at it. Everything's so tiny, but but it's not. Finally, ISO is essentially how sensitive the camera is to the light it's exposed to. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive and thus the brighter the image. But increasing the ISO makes the picture really grainy and kind of gross, so for stop motion, you generally want to stick with shutter speed to change brightness. See it? See? It looks looks a lot better. But I mean, if you want it to look all grainy for like artistic purposes or whatever, I Yes, that's fine. I'm not gonna judge you. So I'd recommend keeping the ISO as low as possible at 100, but if you just can't stop yourself and you really want to touch it, I'll let you put it up to 200 just as a little birthday treat. So those are the basics for those three settings, but there's another thing. When you mess with each of these settings, there's something you have to do to maintain your image's brightness if you want to perhaps change the depth of field or something. You need to balance them out with each other, and there are things called stops that can help you. A stop is basically a segment of each of these settings, and on Dragon Frame they're labeled so you can keep track. So for shutter speed, there's like 30 seconds, 50 seconds, 8 seconds, 4 seconds, 2 seconds, 1 seconds, 1 half, 4 to 4, 1 8, etc. F stop, F32, F32, and ISO is Here's how you can balance them out. Let's say I've got everything set up so I have a relatively bright image with a shallow depth of field, which means the coffee mug and the paint can are blurred out but the puppet is in focus. But I want to change that so everything's in focus. I'm going to change the F stop from 5.6 to 32, which is 5 stops as you can see. But uh-oh, now the image is all dark and stuff because a deeper depth of field needs more light for some reason. And since we don't want to touch the ISO, cause you know, the grain stuff, we need to adjust the shutter speed to get the brightness back to normal. But how are we gonna do that? Well, we adjust it. You guessed it. Five stops! And there we go, everything is as it should be. Everything is now in focus, and the brightness is at the same level as it was before. Yay, fun learning time! And there you go, that's how to use and balance out those three settings. But remember, don't touch ISO. It's bad. It's naughty. Finally, we come to white balance. You know how some lights are kind of dim and look all orangey, but some are all crystally and blue? Well, white balance is what, you guessed it, balances that out and brings the lighting as close as possible to true white. The camera I'm using has built-in white balance presets, but there is a way to manually set it. Let's just go over the presets, cause, cause, you know, it's, it's easier. First off, tungsten light. Tungsten light is typically the kind of light that incandescent light bulbs in your house give off, and it's more orange and warm in a sense. 
the tungsten presets add blue to the image to balance the lighting out and bring it to a more true white. Now even though these settings are meant to be used to balance out the lighting, they can also be used for setting the mood for the lighting. If you want to have your scene perhaps feel colder or even just sadder, something like the tungsten setting can give the scene a blue tint. Another preset, like maybe shade, can make the scene really orange and warm, which changes the mood drastically. All these settings have different things with orange and what blue or whatever, and you can really just experiment to see what you feel like works. So basically, orange warm, blue cool. I haven't really known cool to be associated with the color orange at all. Except maybe, maybe like if you take an orange and you, you put it in the freezer and then wait like 45 minutes or so, and then take it out and you'll be like, whoa, this orange is really cold. I didn't even know orange could be that cold. Well, 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 except for maybe like, like orange sherbet or sorbet or whatever. Okay, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and take care. And guess what's on for next time? Oh, <laughs>